other side, joining me from our D.C. Bureau is Larry Pratt. He's the executive director of Gun Owners of America. Mr. Pratt, doesn't he make a valid point, the senator, in saying you shouldn't get a gun permit by or a gun purchase by default? You ought to at least undergo that background check. If you look at the recent mass murders, in fact, for quite some time, they get their guns legally. Uh, they don't have a, a previous record that's going to trigger anything. So we're dealing with the fact that there are evil people who are going to do terrible things, as this uh, dirtbag did in Oregon. And what we need to change, and what I hope the senator one of these days will take a look at, since he wants to look at uh, things in a comprehensive fashion, as he said, look at the laws that are de denying people the ability to defend themselves. That was a gun-free zone in Oregon, as so many, in fact, all but two of our country's mass murders since 1950 have occurred in such gun-free zones. I think maybe that's a clue that we ought to be changing it, and the senator doesn't seem to get that memo. Are you telling me that you will oppose that measure, which he will introduce on Tuesday, which says if 72 hours elapses and the background check is not completed by default, the person ought to be able to purchase the weapon? Sure. Uh, he's not addressing the sure, problem. Sure, the wait problem a minute. Sure, you'll these... oppose it? I, I'm just, and uh, respectfully, I just want to know, yes or no, are you going to oppose that sure, measure? Sure, we're going to just... oppose it. Absolutely. But why? Why, sh why, should, why should someone, this just guy... because of, of, of bureaucratic ineptitude, hasn't concluded a, a background check, why by default should someone get the weapon? And that way we're going to feel better that uh, everything's going to be okay if the background check is finally accomplished. No, I'm going to, I'm going to, no, listen, as a, no, I'm going to tell you something. A, as a firearm owner, I have multiple firearms all under lock and key at home, so I don't want you to think that this is some left-wing hit job. I'm going to sleep better as an American knowing that whomever is purchasing a weapon at least has been investigated. If the 72 hours isn't enough time, that it should be extended before they get the gun. Even though it's been shown that it hasn't been uh, addressing the problem, the problem is that we're disarming the good guys, making them sit there and wait for a bullet, which is what happens with a mass murder in a gun-free zone. And I think that is outrageous that we're not talking about the senator's love for gun-free zones. So your answer, and I don't want to be too simplistic, is more Americans should be armed. What you're saying is take away those gun-free zones and instead allow people to carry everywhere. Would it have helped if the, some of the potential victims had been armed in that English classroom? I don't know, because that presupposes that a person who was armed would have reacted appropriately. And frankly, there's no requirement that an individual would have to be trained to respond in that kind of a circumstance. I say to myself, if one of my four kids were in that classroom and someone were to pull out a weapon with the best of intentions, maybe they'd, they'd shoot my kid by, by error. You know, if that's really going through your mind, maybe you ought to not even go to class. The fact of the matter is you can't point to something like that that actually happened. You're trying to argue against my position with a what if, could if sort of thing. It just doesn't happen. Respectfully, you the guy you at the raised, scene of wait the a minute, crime wait a minute, knows you raised, who the attacker is. You raised the what if scenario by saying what if someone had had a gun in that school and could have taken this guy out. I want to show you two slides and you can react to them. Here's slide number one, which shows that the U.S. has 29.7 homicides by firearm per 1 million people. And look at that. Just by sake of comparison, Germany has 1.9. Second slide, we have 4.4% of the world population, but 42% of the civilian-owned guns are here in the United States. Doesn't that mean we have more homicides because our firearms are more plentiful? Uh, actually, when you uh, look at the time frame that you've selected, it's obvious that you've cut out two world wars, concentration camps, and other means of mass uh, murder that were perpetrated against disarmed populations in Europe. So, no, it's much more lethal to live under a gun control regime than it is in the United States where you can protect yourself. Mr. Pratt, thanks so much for being here.